Welcome to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami, powered by the Retirement Income Store and brought to you by Adjami Financial Strategies in Guilford, Connecticut and Denver, Colorado. So I have had a lot of people, young people, coming to me and telling me that they're getting these checks uh, from the government, uh, whether it's in their checking account or in the mail or whatnot. And quite to be quite frank, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm quite concerned about that, Daniel. Why is that, Dad? Is that because you're worried about them losing that money because the government possibly could take that back? They don't say this is your money in that letter. Or is it because you're worried about going into a universal basic income? Well, the answer is both. And that's why I think we should talk today on a radio show about uni- what is universal basic income. I'm Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami. And you're listening to Financial Strategies. That I'm glad you're bringing up this subject because this is something serious that back in the um, election cycle, Andrew Yang got laughed off of the stage <laughs> right? Um, because he, he was running on the platform of universal basic income. He said, because of technology, because jobs are, are being done by machine learning, by robots, by artificial intelligence, that we should institute a $2,000 a month universal basic income. And he got laughed, laughed off the stage. But then lo and behold, we had COVID. And he was the first guy to get a call. How do we institute giving people money? Yeah. And that's what's, that's what's happening right now, right? So now what's happening with this, this, this child tax credit? People um, it, it, with, with children under the age of 17 in 2021 are uh, able to receive money every month right now through the end of the year as, as an advancement on the child tax credit. And that is a concern to me because that's exactly what that is. That's universal basic income. Some people, if your if your child is uh, will uh, is seventeen um, uh, by the end of twenty twenty one or younger, you will get uh, potentially at least uh, three hundred dollars a month. If they're under six years old, you could get three hundred and fifty dollars a month. Or um, uh, actually, I have that reversed. Uh, or I mean, I have that. Uh, I think it's three hundred dollars a month for the for the older. Uh, for the younger and then uh, whatever. But anyway, the point is you're going to get more for a younger person who is younger than six, six years old or younger. And, but that's universal basic income where the government is just giving people money. And the problem that I see with that, uh, one of the things with this is that it's a, it, it, at tax time, it could come by, back to bite people. Now, some people, not an issue, but Mike, concern is that, number one, this is an advancement. They say that several times in the letter that um, President Biden sent out and the IRS sent out. It's an advancement, which is going to be taken off at tax time. And uh, it's a partial piece of it. But then also you have to meet qualifications. And they're making those qualifications. When they're sending those checks right now, they're, they're doing those qualifications off of 2020. Well, you know, I know a young couple who have a child under six years old who in 2020 didn't make anywhere near the amount of money that they're going to be making in 2021. Um, and uh, so there's a potential for that, that couple to have to give back some of that money when it comes time for tax season in 2022. And that, that concerns me greatly, especially if people are not prepared for that. So you're saying that um, there's a difference between a tax deduction and a tax credit. Exactly. And so this is a tax credit, but not only is it a tax credit, but they're getting an advance of the tax credit, which is money coming into your pockets. Exactly. And if you don't meet certain qualifications, you may owe that money back to the government when you file your tax return. Exactly. You got it. That's the point. So what's and the difference between a tax credit and a tax deduction? Okay. So a tax deduction, you add up all your all your income on your tax return. And then let's say you give, uh, you know, $20,000 a year to a charity, right? Well, then you, you deduct that, you know, if you have a hundred thousand dollars of income, you deduct that. And now you have, um, 
$80,000 income you're being taxed on. Well, if your income is low, if your income is $30,000 and you, and, and, and you give a lot of money to a charity like that, well, uh, you know, that's it. But a tax credit where they actually give you money, they, it doesn't matter. I mean, you could owe no taxes and they would give you $1,000 on top. If you do owe taxes, this $1,000, if it was $1,000 tax credit, would go toward the, the, what you owe the government. And they came out with a child tax credit uh, several years ago, and it was $1,000, I think, when they first came out. Maybe it was $500. Then it went up to $1,000 per child. Um, then in 2018, it went up to $2,000 per child. And now in 2021, it's going up to, depending upon the age of the child, $3,000 or $3,600. Um, so, uh, and, and then, so this is a credit. So if you owe, if, if you owe no money in taxes, you don't pay any money in taxes. You make, you know, between all the deductions, everything, you don't owe any money. Well, then you're getting this $3,600, uh, if your child is under is six or under on top of that. And then the government is now saying, well, we'll take half of that and we'll send that to people every month until uh, through the balance of 2021. And when they're sending people money, that's universal basic income, UBI. That's they're just giving them people money. So if if I want to benefit from a deduction, I have to have earned income. I have to I have to have income, then I get part of that income back, and that's that's a tax deduction. So I made a hundred grand. And um, I, I put solar on my house, so I get ten thousand dollars of credits or or deductions from my taxes because they wanted me. You know, the government wanted to encourage me to put solar on my house, and so now my my income looks like ninety thousand dollars, and I get ten thousand dollars back. Exactly. But the credit, actually, you could have zero earned income and right. still get that money. So exactly. you pay nothing in taxes and you and you get a credit. But now they even advanced it even further where they're actually paying you the credit monthly instead of having to wait to the end of the year to see if you qualify for this. And so it's a cash payment. It's periodic. It's going to individuals. And it's at least universal to people who have children. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head with all those, with all those aspects. And, uh, you know, that's where some, uh, some people, uh, you know, some people don't have to file taxes because they don't make enough income to pay taxes on that. So this is even being given to them. There's a sp- place on the IRS website where people can find out if you didn't file taxes. I mean, if you filed taxes 2019, 2020, they're do- sending it to you automatic. But if you didn't file taxes, they don't know about you. It, but you can still qualify and can still get this. The reason why you wouldn't file taxes is because you didn't owe any tax. You didn't make enough money, but that's where this money would come in on top of that. And if you have four children who are, uh, you know, under 17, you're getting, you could potentially get at least $12,000 this year, half of that, $6,000 of that being paid every month from July through the end of the year. So basically a thousand dollars a month, but you know, depending what happens with your income next year, that could be, uh, that could, that could come back to hurt you and haunt you. Uh, like I've seen that happen before, um, for, with people when it came out to like the Obamacare with the health insurance, that's what they kind of, what they did with people. And then at tax time, you know, I, I know at least a couple people that owed five or $6,000 in taxes, uh, that they, that they didn't think they owed because they had to give back some of, some of the, the premium from the Obamacare. So it sounds pretty good. I mean, as long as you don't go over that threshold and have to owe the money back, because that would that that stink if you got, you know, nine, ten thousand, twelve thousand dollars. You have four kids. You got something like twelve thousand dollars, and um, you made too much money, and then you found out you had to pay all that back. But if you don't have to pay it back, right? Then that sounds pretty nice. Free money. Right, right. Well, then that's the whole idea behind U- UBI, right? Universal basic income. It was where the government's giving away money. And, you know, in, in the one letter that uh, it, I just thought it was very interesting, in the one letter that Joe Biden uh, sent out about uh, what he signed into place, and, uh, you know, he keeps, he says very often in that letter, I did this, I did this, I did this, right? Because they're, they're wanting to take credit for giving people money that they're, that there's, 
you're not earning it. You're not working for it. The government's just giving it to you. But the one problem with that, the government has no money. Yeah, well, I was just going to ask you if it's not a cr- <laughs> if it, if it's not a deduction, right? A deduction is just giving you your money back. You pay the taxes and they give right. it back to you. Right. But it's not a deduction, so it's a credit. So so you paid nothing in. Where is the money coming from to collect this? We're going to call it a universal basic income. And some people may say, well, it's not really because everybody's not getting it. You have to have kids. But we're getting more and more of these programs. There's another one that people know very well that didn't used to be there. And that every few years, it gets a little bit more generous. And it's a form of basic income, right? Uh Let's use that and let's, it's time for us to take a break. So if you want to hear about what that other forum is, come back and join us after we take our break. And, you know, Daniel, you know, uh, I think this is so significant when we're talking about universal basic income, when it comes to people's retirements, right? Because they could, you know, the thing we have to be concerned about is how much taxes we pay and running out of money because people are living longer and longer and longer. And it's easier, easier, easier to run out of money. And some people don't want to take money from the government, so their their portfolios need to be in place in the proper way to be able to take care of that, right? Is, is there a book that comes to your mind that we can uh, maybe give to the people listening to us that, that would fit this? Well, let's, uh, let's give out a couple of things. Let's give out, we have a, a commissioned report we put together on longevity and protecting yourself in longevity. It's about long-term care and how important long-term care is for people. And then um, our good friend, Mike Eastham, he has, he has put together a book about income strategies to help people keep up with inflation, to help people keep up with um, longevity, right? As we have yeah. longer and longer life expectancies, it's more and more important to be able to have the income that you need to survive as these programs come in, that they have to be funded by borrowing or creating money. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Mike Eason being a CPA, uh, you know, comes from a a fantastic financial background to be able to help people to uh, understand this. So I I think that's a good book. And I like that that uh, uh, commission report you're talking about, long term care. And, uh, you know, if you're in our listening audience, want either one of these things, call us at 800-725-7616, 725-7616 to get your free copy. We'll be glad to put that uh, in the mail to you and such. And uh, if you want to hear about what the UBI, Universal Basic Income, uh, that has already been in place for many years, and uh, you know, come back, make sure you join us after our break. We'll be right back after this. History tells us the market goes up and the market goes down. What would you do if you lost half of your retirement savings? It's time to make the shift to steady, reliable retirement income. And where do you go? The Retirement Income Store. Log on to agerme.com for your free retirement review. That's A-G-E-M-Y dot com. The Retirement Income Store, where retirees go for income. Welcome back to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjami in Connecticut and Daniel Adjami in Colorado. It was in 1935 that uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed into law the Social Security Act. About five years later, the very first uh, benefit was paid out to a woman named Ida Mae Fuller. Ida Mae uh, had... Uh, been paying into Social Security just a little bit, um, and uh, she her total payments into the fund were only twenty four dollars and seventy five cents. And then when she turned sixty five, she started collecting benefits of twenty two dollars and fifty four cents. So she paid in twenty five dollars. She collected twenty three dollars um, uh, per month until she was a hundred years old. She collected almost twenty three thousand dollars over her lifetime for only contributing. to Social Security. Universal basic income in progress. I'm Andrew Ajme. 
And I'm Daniel Adjami, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. Today, we're talking about what is universal basic income. And uh, that some people may fight you or us on that one about Social Security being universal basic income because they paid into the system. So they're just getting their money back from, um, from the government. It's not really a universal basic income. Uh, what would you say to that? Well, you know, that's interesting because people don't pay in as much as they get out. Like, and especially, you know, at that time, that was one of the issues uh, and still is one of the issues is that people were only put in 1%, but they were getting a lot more out uh, from that standpoint, especially in Ida May's case where she got $23,000 out for putting in $25. How, how does that work? Well, you, it's a Ponzi scheme. Right, you it's know, the lar- largest legal Ponzi scheme. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, and it, and and that's why they're talking about in twenty thirty five, uh, Social Security being reduced because you know what has happened is with baby boomers coming into play and coming into the workforce, there's more people than ever putting money in, so it has worked very well. At one point, it was up to something like you know uh, one person on Social Security benefits for every twelve people putting in something like that, so it was a big deal. Today, we're down to about maybe three or four people putting in for every one person on. So that's where the problem is not as much as going in as what's needed. And of course, whenever the government does things, you know, they buy a hammer for $300. So, so, uh, you know, it costs a lot more money when the government puts their hands into things. And so that's what uh, the issue is with social security it costs a lot more than what uh, they're taking in. And that's a, a you know, a, a, a thing there, but so what happens? The government's got to print more money to make it happen. Right, Daniel? Right. Well, well, right as things are now, it looks like um, Social Security will need to make some changes before uh, 2035 because that's right. when it start, runs into problems. So the question you have to ask is, um, are they going to make it more generous at that point? <laughs> right? Because, right? Because that's how you get reelected. Or are they going to to change it negatively, like make it make the age older, right? right maybe right. you can't apply until you're 70, or maybe it's a different amount. But it why we're saying this relates to universal basic income is because you could tell us the story of how Social Security started, and it wasn't supposed to be a retirement benefit. Right. But things changed and things changed and things changed, and it got more and more and more uh, lucrative. It right. became more essential in people's lives. And when things become essential, um, governments, politicians don't take those away because that means they'll lose their jobs, right? right. Could you right. imagine if Biden got up today and said, we're not going to pay out any more Social Security benefits because we have to balance <laughs> the budget? He'd be out tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Daniel, in, in uh, 1935, when that Social Security Act was passed, part of that pass was the welfare act and and was welfare came into place and both of those things were there to be able to take care of uh shall i say widows and orphans in distress and uh you know we tell a little bit more about that in our in our social security uh podcast and webinar but um uh with that the the idea there you know that was you know from my recollection my from looking back at history for everyone one of the the major first pieces of universal basic income where the government's giving money out to people. And like you said, people would fight us on that, but it is it more, you know, welfare, what's the idea of welfare? Welfare people are not doing anything for it. Um, uh, you know, you know, from that standpoint, um, you know, so it is a gift from the government to people. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're receiving more than what you paid in well, that's another aspect behind it. So that's, so that's, that, that's a terminology, right? That will be going away as universal basic income starts catching on because the whole thing behind the MMTers and universal basic income basically wait a minute, wait a says, MMT, MMT, what is MMT stand for, for our listening audience? Modern monetary theory. Okay. And basically what it says is, you know, uh, Bernie, Bernie Sanders kind of ran on this and Stephanie Kelton is like the big, the the big advocate of this she wrote the book literally on it and um basically what it means is when you 
control your own currency and you're the world's uh, reserve currency, you can create as much money as you want. So if you want to give everybody $2,000 a month checks so that they can, that they have basic living expenses covered, you can. And how that works is the Congress passes a bill that says we're going to, we're going to give everyone $2,000 a month. And here's how much it's going to cost. So they issue bonds to cover that. And then the Federal Reserve, who is independent of the government, buys those bonds. Right. And you got the money you need. And since it's just zeros and ones, you could essentially wipe out all the debt with just a keyboard stroke. Right. And there's no more debt. And the funny thing is, this is catching on. This has been catching on. This has been catching on. This is a bigger and bigger topic all the time. Like I said, Andrew Yang ran kind of on the universal basic income and Bernie Sanders kind of ran on the MMT platform where he's going to fund everything, fix all the world's problems, fix uh, climate change, global warming with this, right? That That's right. what the MMT is planned to do, but it's not modern and it's not a theory. It's already been done. If, if printing more money meant you had the best economy, Venezuela would have the best economy. Right. Right. Well, you know, this is interesting that you're saying this because because, you know, um, you know, when you don't have enough money to pay your bills. Right. Uh, When you guys were small and and I started off in business, it was difficult to make ends meet. Right. So so your mother would say to me, uh, Andrew, we need to stop spending so much money. And I would say, you know, or I need to make more money. And because uh, how are we going to stop? We're already cutting things thin with everybody and and with our kids and whatnot. So 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 that's what I've done is I've made more money. Well, there's a third thing that you're saying that the governments have. So the governments in the past could say, well, we can spend less, we can tax more. Now you're saying, well, now the government's saying just just print more money, and we'll get more money by printing more. That's a perfect example. Okay, so in your scenario right there. You could spend less, you could make more. Spending less wasn't really an option for you because you had a kid. (laughs) (laughs) Or you could have a credit card without a limit. Right. And you could put all your money on that credit card and never have a limit. And that's what MMT says. You have a credit card because you have a printing press that has no limit. And so as long as that credit card company doesn't cut off your limit. You're good as gold. You spend as much money as you want. Don't the try this at home. Comes in <laughs> <laughs> is if you have to pay back that credit card or the the you know right. the, the revolver stops. And then right. what do you do? Right, right. The printing press stops. Right, and everything. Yeah, and th- th- don't try this at home for our listening audience. Right, that still remains the way for for us as individuals. You know, either spend less or make more money. Right, and uh, you know, but people go out and they spend all this money on credit cards, but it does come back to bite them. Where it, you know, you know, the this MMT and universal basic income concepts are like, well, that won't come back. It will. You know, the government can continue on with that. And, uh, you know, that's where, but when it comes back to the individual's piece, uh, you know, and we want to make sure that we don't outlive our income, we want to have all the income that we have for the rest of our life. That's where it's important to be able to look at long term care planning to be able to make sure that you have what you need to be able to live the rest of your life, right? Uh, you know, I don't know anybody that has on their bucket list, uh, you know, I want to live my life and then I want to go to a convalescent home and die in a convalescent home. You know, you know, uh, you know, my my mother uh, basically died at home. My grandmother died at home. You know, that's what, what I want to do from that standpoint. Um, you know, I don't want to die in a convalescent home. So I want to make sure that um, I have what I need to be able to, to stay at home for the rest of my life. And um, that's, 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 that's a good thing, right? We, we talk about that all the time. And that's what, that's what our company is based upon. It's as we look into the future and we see life expectancies increasing and increasing and increasing, as we see 
um, technologies change that will make people have even longer life expectancies and longevity than they can even imagine when you go dive into the science and you see what's happening. Uh, it, most people's fear is living long because they don't want to have a terrible life in their old age, right? So right. it's not just about having the longevity. It's about having quality of life, having your life get better and better. Um, every year of your life should be better than the last year, right? And right. so these strategies, these things that we talk about on the show are to increase the quality of life, at least from a financial standpoint. Um, we try to give benefit also from um, a community standpoint or a purpose standpoint, right? And so it's about the quality of life. Longevity is one thing, but you want to have an excellent quality of life with that longevity. And with yeah. that, we're giving away a white paper and a book for our listeners today. That's yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, white paper commission report that we have is just long term care. Ask for it by name when you call 800 725 7616. The book, um, um, uh, Common Sense Income Strategies by Michael Isom, uh, is significant because you, because to be able to have your money working hard for you to be able to last the rest of your life so that you don't have to work for your money and you don't have to worry about running out of money. That's where these uh, common sense income strategies come into play. Uh, and we think that that would be a good book. So we want to offer that to you today. If you're listening to us, you're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Ajme. Call 800-725-7616, 800-725-7616. to get your copy of that. And uh, we'll be right back after this. I'm David Scranton, founder of the Retirement Income Store. If you're in or near retirement, are you certain you have the right retirement plan in place? Do you want to help ensure your nest egg will last you all throughout retirement? Take our retirement review quiz and find out in five minutes or less if you're doing everything you can to achieve a more successful retirement. Visit us online at adjami.com. That's A-G-E-M-Y dot com. Welcome back to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjami in Connecticut and Daniel Adjami in Colorado. Hey, Dad, you know, um, I was talking to a client the other day and we were talking about increasing their income for the future because of longevity. And I was saying how the breakthroughs in technology, how to activate the longevity genes in people, um, actually going in and reprogramming genes inside of people's bodies to help them have longevity. Um, and so we needed to make sure that they have a plan for that. And they kind of rolled their eyes. And this happens a lot when we talk about um, the younger, making sure that the older, right, Daniel, the younger, is taking care of Daniel the older because we don't know how long we're going to live. And people kind of roll their eyes when you talk about the longevity. But statistics are showing now that if you're a male and you make it to 65, you have a statistical chance of living another 18 years. And if you're female and you make it to 65, then you have another 21 years probability of lifespan. And it's increasing all the time. So now when we talk about Daniel the younger planning for Daniel the older, the younger could be 65 and still have a huge lifespan ahead. That's, I'm that's Daniel right. Ajami. And I'm Andrew Ajami. And you're listening to Financial Strategies with Daniel and Andrew Ajami. Today's topic is uh, universal basic income. And what is it? And how does it work? And uh, we've already described a couple things in regard to uh, this child tax credit that people are receiving who have uh, children younger than 17 every month. And then again, at tax time, as well as Social Security, welfare system, and what else is to come and how to be able to plan and prepare for that for your retirement. Daniel, that's um, uh, that is good that you bring that stuff up. And you know, what, you know, for those in our audience, you know, whenever I'm talking to people, I typically say, "Hey, I'm talking to two people today." You know, like Daniel said, Daniel the younger and Daniel the elder. 
And because uh, you're younger than you're ever going to be again today, unfortunately, but uh, we need to make sure that Daniel the Younger, even though he's 65 years old, uh, it, needs, it takes care of Daniel the Elder as well as Daniel the Younger. And because, uh, you know, and, and the thing that you didn't say about those life expectancies, Daniel, is that, you know, you take a couple who are uh, retiring at 65 years old, and the chances of one of them living into their 90s minimally is is very good from that standpoint. So, uh, you know, for people to live into their 90s and beyond today is 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 a significant potential, and with that, we need to be able to to plan for that and and uh, you know hope for the best, plan for the worst, right? And if you know if you live a long time, you want to make sure you have the money to outlive that, uh, unless of course you want to just have the government you know, dole you out money, which some people are for that and that kind of thing. And, but the question is, will it be enough to do what you want to do too? Or will, or will, you know, that credit card get cut off for the government at some point. And that's, that's why we, you know, we did a show about the three legged stool. And if you can add more legs to your stool, right? right. The three legged stool represents the three sources of income most people have when they're in retirement. And that would be social security, your retirement savings, and then some type of a pension. And a lot of people don't have pensions anymore. So you lost one stool already. But if that credit card gets cut off for the government, whereas no one will buy their bonds anymore, right? right? So they, they can't, um, they can't keep overspending, right? The credit card is cut up. The credit card is cut up. It's shut off. You can't take any more out. Right. And so if that happens, will you be able to depend on these universal basic income type things like that, that, that child credit that's supposed to be temporary, but what gets, what gets taken away? Will you be able to depend on social security? If you're having longer and longer lifespans, right? Right. Longer, better longevity. You don't want your quality of life to be dependent on the politicians. At least I don't, I don't want, somebody who botches an exit <laughs> out of Afghanistan <laughs> like this and puts tons of people's life on the run, gives away billions and billions and billions of our taxpayer money, yours and my money right, that we right. paid for taxes to yeah. terrorists right. Um, right. To, to be in control of one of the legs to the stool of my retirement. Right, right. Exactly. And, and, you know, that's what it comes down to, right, is that we have to be able to be uh, able to understand how that all works. And, you know, there's a danger of running out of money, uh, you know, both from the governmental standpoint, if the government runs out of money and the printing press is stopped and, and, the, and the credit is stopped and they, they're doing this universal income, level, we have that it's difficulty. And that's why people are concerned about Social Security stopping today, because that that could be cut back from that standpoint if there are no changes in that. Uh, but from the same thing in, in with people running out of money uh, during retirement, that's that's significant and cutting into principal. And uh, you know, I, I think Daniel that uh, you know, is this a that's you know, we have this commission report that um, you know I think that we should be offering to our listeners today called uh, the dangers of spending down uh, principal during retirement. Uh, because nobody wants to run out of money, and uh, you know they know that there's a danger of that. But how does that happen? People don't always know. People don't know what they don't know. That's why we have this show, right? To be able to educate them in things that they don't know. And this uh, report that we have will be able to educate them and help them understand some of those things and how you can spend down principal when you shouldn't be. And so uh, uh, we have this available to you in our listening audience by calling eight hundred. 725-7616, if you would like your, yours on spending down principal, don't spend down principal, 800-725-7616. Daniel, uh, you know, the government uh, can continue printing this money, uh, giving this money away. Um, you know, how does that come into play when we're talking about, um, you know, how does that tie into things when it, we're, with inflation and such? So. We did a show actually a couple of weeks ago about you know the debate between inflation and deflation, and there's there's a ton of inflationary events, but there's also a lot going on with deflation, and governments hate deflation, 
because um, it cuts off that credit card, essentially, right? They can inflate the debt away. Like if you look at what's happened since 1971, as far yeah. as productivity to wage increases, or you look at food prices, you look at gas prices, you look at anything like that, and you look at the difference between 1971 to today, you say, what happened? The charts just go like this. They just go straight up. What happened? Well, what happened was we came off the gold standard. Mm -hmm. 1971. Yeah. And so basically what happens is um, that that limit on the credit card went away. Yeah. And so we could just spend as much as we want. But if you can just spend as much as you want, then you have to say, well, then what is a dollar worth? What is my money worth? And if it's not worth anything, then why are you trying to accumulate them? Well, you need them to support the lifestyle that you want to have. So when we look at um, the question that you had about what does that do with inflation? Well, we could be in a deflationary environment where things are actually getting cheaper because of technology, but because we're creating money to give these subsidies to, to keep the social security system going, to give out universal basic income, which we've already established has started based on these, these, this money that they're paying out to people, right. um, then the money becomes less valuable. So even if things aren't getting more expensive, because the dollar or the money we're using is becoming less valuable, it's still taking more of them to purchase the things that you want. And so with longevity yeah. increasing, with longevity increasing, with lifespans increasing, um, and at the same time, the unit of account we're using to purchase the things we want or to maintain our lifestyle becoming less valuable, you have to figure out how you can protect yourself so you can maintain your purchasing power, maintain your lifestyle without depending upon these subsidies. You know, Silicon Valley is pushing hard for universal basic income because when people have enough, they don't complain. Uh -huh. And that allows the elites in Silicon Valley to do whatever they want without people complaining. <laughs> but I don't want to just have enough, right? You, you want to be able to have that quality of life. Right. And right. That, that's kind of what we're talking about. That's what that white paper has to do with how you can increase that quality of life as you get older without having to worry about running out of money. Yeah, well, that's interesting that you say that, that they want people to have enough because, you know, human nature is that when you have enough, it's not enough. You know, you get used to that. And then pretty soon it's like, well, I want more. I want more. I want more. That's kind well, of like that. That's what Netflix, that's what Netflix is for. So you can just sit in front of your TV, <laughs> order Uber Eats and have that food delivered to you and just sit there and, and have enough and just kind of exist. And put on the weight, right? And just put it on and become a big old couch potato, right? Then you won't have to worry about longevity. <laughs> I guess that's one way to handle it, right? <laughs> wow. Okay. So uh, universal basic income, UBI, and uh, it's uh, going on here. But we have a book that we'd like to give you and our listening audience called um, uh, common sense income strategies by our friend Michael Eason, CPA, that will help you understand to be able to have income, get your money working hard uh, as you plan for retirement, as you're in retirement, and be able to help give you what you need to be able to uh, last the rest of your life um, and be able to take care of the um, purpose in your life for your money. And uh, then we can also talk about uh, the performance of your money. Uh, should that be a, a significant thing once you got the purpose taken care of? This book, Common Sense Income Strategies, is available by calling 800-725-7616. We have operators standing by, and you can talk to them at this point, 800-725-7616 for the free book from Mike Gleason, Common Sense Income Strategies. We'll be right back after this. History tells us the market goes up and the market goes down. What would you do if you lost half of your retirement savings? It's time to make the shift to steady, reliable retirement income. And where do you go? The Retirement Income Store. Log on to agerme.com for your free retirement review. That's A-G-E-M-Y.com. 
the Retirement Income Store, where retirees go for income. Welcome back to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjami in Connecticut and Daniel Adjami in Colorado. What? I owe $5,000 to the government? Why? That's what I heard from Mary when she came in to pick up her tax return back the first year that Obamacare was instituted. The reason for this was that Mary had taken out Obamacare for her health insurance. And when they did Obamacare, what they did was they said, okay, we can, we're going we're to uh, discount Obamacare. Uh, we're going to discount this health insurance. Either you can um, take the discount at the end of the year at tax time that you get money back when you pr- do your taxes, or you can have it every month. And then at taxes, we'll even it up. We'll even up the score and, and uh, you'll be good at that rate. So what did most people do? Most people, especially people without any money, they took the monthly benefit so that they could get the most bang for their buck. But the problem with that was that the calculations that the government used was wrong. So then at tax time, when they calculated it, it came up that they actually paid too, that they paid too little. And so the government wanted more money. And so when Mary had to pay $5,000, that she only had about $30,000 a year income, that was egregious. And the reason for it all was because of the government's calculation methods and the government taking back what they said they were going to give to them. I'm Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. Today, we are talking about what is universal basic income. How does it affect you? How will it affect your retirement? And that is sounds like uh, you're going to that old story where, you know, the parent promised the child something and then took it back later on. And uh, that didn't that that doesn't make uh, the children too happy. But if they could do that or if they did that with. Uh, health insurance, right? Should people who are receiving these t- child advanced child credits um, look into put that money aside? Look into are they going to meet the criteria so that they don't get a surprised bill in the mail um, in tax time? Exactly, Daniel. That's that's my huge concern. That I'm afraid that these young couples are going to be uh, having. They're going to recalculate things at tax time, and then they're going to calculate it in such a way that they may be. Now, I, I don't think that will happen for the majority of people, but that's going to happen for some. And like that couple that I said earlier in the in the program, they're going to they have a lot larger income than they this year than they did last year. So they they that could be in jeopardy. And this letter that was sent out to people at the very first word said, you may be eligible. You may be. So they're quantifying it, right? And then to receive advanced payments of child tax credits. And it keeps saying it throughout advanced credits, advanced, 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 which all of that says, all of that is like saying, it's like the parent saying, you, you know, the kid's saying to the parent, hey, can we go here? And the parent says, maybe. Well, what does maybe mean? Well, you know, when I used to say that, it meant, no, we can't, but I don't want to say no. I'm just going to say maybe, right? So, you know, with that, um, you know, that's what my concern is because the government has done this too many times in the past. And the government, you know, is not our friend, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, that's, that's the problem, I think. But, the, but, you know, the worst thing about Mary's situation was that the aspect of, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't somebody say something? Well, that's why we're coming and we're talking to people today on our show. That's why we're trying to say something because people don't know what people don't know. So we're trying to say, hey, hey, here's some red flags. Be careful. Um, whether it's you know living too long, whether it's the child tax credit, whether it's outliving your money, whatever the case may be, be careful and, and plan for the, you know, hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Yeah, exactly. And and when our country, our great country was started, it was started by very wealthy people who gave yeah. up everything yeah. to start a country so everyone could participate in yeah. You're absolutely this right. freedom and this and 
an opportunity, right? And, yeah. and over the years, people without any opportunities have moved here and have started businesses and have built very wonderful lives and taking care of their families and yeah. their families, families and their families, families. But now our politicians, not everyone, but you look at like Pelosi, who has gotten rich off of making huge trades with yeah. Apple after she got off the phone with Tim Cook, right? Or right. At Facebook. And they're supposed to be regulating these companies right. and doing what's in the best interest of the people while they're they're making millions and millions and millions of dollars of trading these tech companies in their own personal accounts while they're supposed to be regulating them to to make sure that your privacy is taken seriously so right. so that's when you say that you're you're not talking about the country and the how it was founded and those things you're talking about the people who have gotten rich right who are supposed to be serving the taxpayers serving the country but they're getting rich off of it instead yeah, and that's what they're wanting to do is give this universal basic income, give money to people, keep them by by their votes and keep them quiet. Here, here's some money, here's some money, shut up. Here's some money, shut up, you know. <laughs> let so, me let us get richer. Here's some money, keep quiet, you know, we have what you need and shut up, right? Yeah. And that's, so that's you know, what I you, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> that's where you start you start saying, well. I can't depend upon these politicians to have my back. And and I don't, I mean, you remember when uh, the PPP loans came out and yeah. we had friends who said, I don't want your 30 cycles of silver. I don't, I don't want that because when people start accepting it, what happens? Well, they start dishing more and more out, right? All right. All right. So they didn't want to accept it because it wasn't right. And they and they don't want that to be the norm. So when we passed the first trillion dollar the spending bill, the right. first two trillion, now trillions just a word we throw around and it's no big deal. Yeah. Right? Obama right. worked very hard to make sure we stayed under a trillion dollars. The MMTers got really mad at him because he wouldn't spend the trillion and a half they wanted him in the great financial crisis. It was like 800 billion or something like that. He wouldn't break that threshold. And then COVID came along and we didn't just break it. We, we went miles. Blew through it, right? Past it. And now, it. now if it's not a trillion, there's no even worth talking about it, right? We got to have. So, so these things are happening. And so when you talk about benefits being taken away from people, and we talk about that credit card limit where we're just like going like crazy. The things that are fixed, like potentially pensions, one of your stools, right. um, yeah. social security with longevity, will it be enough? Will, will the adjustments, will the COLA adjustments be able to support that lifestyle you have? Or will you just be making a buy? Will you be right. depending on your kids? Will you be depending on the government to support your lifestyle? Yeah. Or will you have to decrease that? So we talk about how do you protect yourself from that? Right. And I yeah. think we I think we're uh, giving away a, a, a brochure, a paper that actually talks about that. Yeah. Well, the, the, you know, the paper that we have is dangers of spending down your principal during retirement. And, you know, we want to put this in your hands and our listening audience so that you can uh, read about this and understand those things that you don't know. Uh, you know, a lot of people listening to us, I'm sure, know a lot of different things, but I'm sure you're going to pick up something in this in this um, paper that will help you to be able to be more aware than what you're currently aware so that you can be prepared rather than just have to uh, uh, end up doing whatever happens to you, right? Make a decision by decision on purpose rather than by indecision. So you can have that dangers of spending down principal during retirement, spending down principal, call it 800-725-7616, uh, 800-725-7616. Daniel, you know, we're just wrapping up here our show here and all this stuff, um, you know, how, you know, what do you have to say to our, to, you know, in regard to wrap this up for our audience? So people are probably wondering, you guys jumped all around, you talked about child credit, universal basic income, and you made me mad when you said social security was a, a <laughs> universal basic income. Um, but what we're saying is that your retirement, your lifestyle is dependent upon you planning ahead. Not only just like, well, 
maybe eight years because things change fast, right? They do. We talk about technology and we talk about if you say, well, technology hasn't changed that much. Right. But if you think about 2007, 2008, when the iPhone came out, how yeah. people's lives have changed, right? You yeah. don't have to look up directions before you go somewhere. You don't have to use maps. You don't have to fill out the back of your checkbook how much money you spend because you could just look online and see your balance anytime, right? All yeah. these technologies that have seemingly come slowly have just grown and they've grown exponentially. And this is what's happening um, in science, especially with aging. And so with the next 10, 20 years, the life expectancy could be tremendously more. Not like, well, maybe people live to 90. Some of the, some of the leading scientists, some of the leading um, uh, researchers are thinking that people's lifespans could easily be 120 years old. Wow. Over the next few decades, right? Yeah. And so what that means to you is you have to establish some more stools, yeah. the more legs to your legs. stools yeah. in yeah. your retirement. Um, yeah. Because if, if the government can pull stuff away from you, do you want to be dependent on social security? If right. we're devaluing our money, even if yeah. there's not inflation, but the dollar is becoming worse longer, how will that pension actually support you in 20 years from now? Right. So you want to be looking at things, hard asset things that can produce income. The definition of investment is getting something in return for the capital you provide. Yeah. So there, so if you buy Facebook stock, that might be a great stock, but they're, they're not guaranteeing you. There's nothing that says in this time you will receive something. You're hoping that they continue to innovate. But when you're in retirement, what you want to do is you want to have assets that will benefit from, from countries devaluing their money. Uh -huh. What can you invest in that will benefit from that hard assets, things that will pay you on monthly or quarterly or yearly basis. So you can spend that money. And if you don't want to spend that money, you have too much money already, then you <laughs> reinvest it. So if you do live to be a hundred years old, you don't have to have one of your worries in life being, well, I can't spend my money for this because I don't want to run out. That sounds like that's common sense and income strategies to me, Daniel. That's what that sounds like. And speaking of common sense income strategies, we have the book, Common Sense Income Strategies, that we'd like to give you and our listening audience uh, for free. Uh, it's a $25 book on Amazon and uh, bestseller, and we're glad to put that in your hand so that you can understand how that you can have promises and guarantees to your income instead of just hope and, and, and be able to grow your money the old-fashioned way through dividends and interest, what people did in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, um, as opposed to just the growth aspect and getting in, in the line, the purpose versus performance concept. So you can have that by calling 800-725-7616, 800-725-7616. This common sense income strategies is talking about investing for the I rather than the G. And if you want your retirement to be stress-free, invest for the I, not the G. Till next time, we'll see you.